Today we bring the word and the vision to you. And the Lord uh, showed a bullock cart, the yoke, the front part, and the cart. Then I realized this is the call of God and the load we are to bear or the load we are to carry in the service of the Lord. Then, uh, then I realized then I realized that the, uh, the, 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 the yoke was on a bull and it was struggling and someone was trying to ride it and uh, strange thing of all, the cart uh, had unequal walls, unequal wheels. Then I realized these are unequal partners. It may be in marriage or it may be in doing God's work and it looks such a struggle. I said, Lord, this is not a nice scene. How can I talk about this? Then the scene changed, and then there was the same cart, so to say, but the yoke part, you know, the front part of it, was, uh, it was the call of God, it was the yoke of Christ, it was shining, it had an ethereal beauty, and there was, a, there was a shining presence of the Lord, and there was also the angel of the call that God assigns to help us supernaturally, and the cart uh, had the right amount of load, the burden to bear. But Jesus said, come unto me that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. But I will give you rest. Learn of me. Uh, uh, I am meek and lowly. You will find rest. So there is a giving rest and uh, finding rest. The word, the Greek word for rest <coughs> means almost life again or life renewed or life continuing a rejuvenation when we take the yoke of Christ. And my yoke is uh, easy and my burden is light. And so this yoke of Christ, when we take it, it becomes our life. We be our life becomes part of it, we are intertwined with it, and the yoke of Christ, the call of God, the onward, the yonder, forward, upward call, the pressing on to the mark of the price, the high calling in Christ, is, goes forward, takes us forward. And it seems as if the yoke knew where to go. The speed, the placement, every day, the 24-hour stretch, not only that, every week, not only that, the long, on the long haul, this, this yoke knew what its scope is, the God's scope, and we are to live by it. And we don't have to go the other way, the first one I mentioned, just striving ourselves, though the call of God is upon us. And then the yoke also came to say that, uh, and the, the call came again that the Lord is quickly gathering his own who have scattered. And the Lord said, uh, the, I got the sense that there is an urgency in the Lord's gathering. And this, uh, this God's scope of this yoke, which is part of us now, it can go through any mountain, it can go through any ditches, drudgery, mud, rough places. It just pulls through we are facilitated from heaven. We only obey and we become, we are not passive, just that our interaction with it, our passion is in it. And we choose the right partner for the right job. Of course, lifelong partner is, is our marriage, in our marriage, the life that you two together. And then the emphasis that from parents to children. And at this point, I like to read the blessing of Moses to Israel on the verge of entry into the promised land. Moses would not go, but he gave his passionate last charge for Israel. What a charge, what a hope. And this is how it goes. The blessing and the curse which I have said before you, and you call them to mind in all nations where the Lord your God has banished you, you return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart. Uh, then the Lord your God will restore you from captivity. So the first one, restore you from captivity. That's the Lord's promise. He will restore us from all captivity and bring us to a large place, a good place, a place of abiding good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, this is the Lord's desire for us. And then the second stage is, uh, how is he saying the second one? Uh, he's saying, then the Lord your God. Uh, then if you're outcast, though have got scattered and become outcast, the Lord will bring, bring them in. Uh, he will reverse, restore you from captivity, have compassion on you, and will gather you. So the Lord, Lord is in a process of gathering. Now, COVID and world's forces are scattering. 
people are scattered, their countries, COVID has made the scattered worse, world's resources have been taken hold of by a few to do their own Babel Tower, but God is gathering. So whatever the scattering forces are, the Christian has to believe when the Lord is minded to gather, get into his arms, get into his yoke, and that we will be in the God enterprise, best enterprise always, but more so at COVID times. A God enterprise that will not be defeated, restore you from captivity, compassion on you. Please read Deuteronomy 30 every day with your generation, children and children's children. Let them hear you. People where the Lord your God has scattered. Uh, if you, your outcasts are at the ends of the earth, so those who have gone even further than that, He still brings them. From there the Lord your God will gather you. From there He will bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed. You shall possess it and He will prosper you and, the, and, and multiply you more than your fathers. So here is a promise. The third promise that you will be multiplied more than your fathers. Moreover, verse 6, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants, so the emphasis on father to descendants, uh, to love the Lord your God all your heart with all your soul and that you may live. The Lord your God will inflict, fourth promise, inflict on all these, these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. So we don't have to think of our enemies, we don't have to do tit for tat. In fact, what we are, the Christ asks us to do in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that despitefully use you, pray for them, pray for them that persecute you. That's our thing. And God will look after and deal with the enemies who obstruct the cause of the gospel. And verse 8, you shall obey the Lord your God, observe all his commandments which I command you today. So every promise is balanced with a condition. These are the condition, this is the promise. Verse 9, then the Lord your God will prosper you abundantly. Fifth promise, prosper you abundantly in all the work of your hand, in the offspring of your body, and in the offspring of your cattle, in the products of your ground. The Lord will again rejoice over you for good, and as he rejoiced over your fathers. So what a prosperity, what a favor, what a rejoicing. If you, now the condition, if you obey the Lord your God to keep his commandments in this book of law, if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. And I will read the last one as the blessing in Deuteronomy chapter 30, second part of verse 19 and 20. So choose life to order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him, for this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord so to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So God bless you. This is the promise. He will be your life and your land. We will trust the Lord. We can see that the Lord is building Zion, and uh, Revelation 14, the Peter said the Lamb went, they followed him, the Zion people, and then the Zion Tower comes up, and there is a Tower of Babel, like the bear crawling. But when Zion is built, nations will bow down and the Tower of Babel will lose its power over God's people. It's a tough battle, but God has all we need. Thank you, Lord Jesus.